Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Mocha Blend's Perspective Solver. In Mocha, we'll do a perspective track, and in Cinema 4D, we'll turn that track into an object solve. Okay, let's get started. This tutorial is broken down into the following sections which Mocha Blend solver to use, tracking the plane in Mocha, solving in Mocha Blend, identifying problems, and creating the final object solve. Mocha Blend contains two camera solvers, each one designed to solve a different type of motion. Which one should you use for your shot? Take a look at the frames in this sequence. You'll see the hand is translating from left to right and also moving closer to the camera in each frame. This shot should be tracked in Mocha with both translation and scale and solved in Mocha Blend with the 2.5D solver. In the next image sequence, you see a hand that is translating from left to right, moving towards the camera in each frame and is also rotating around the camera's z-axis. This type of shot can be tracked in Mocha with translation, scale, and rotation, and solved in Mocha Blend with the 2.5D solver. In our final shot, you see a hand that is rotating, but it's not rotating around the camera z-axis. This is a perspective change on the plane of the hand. This type of shot should be tracked in Mocha with translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. This type of motion can only be solved by Mocha Blend's 3D solver. For this shot, we're going to do an object solve of the palm of the hand. Let's look through the shot and see what we have to work with here. Now this isn't really a plane, and you can see at some points it's quite curved. We want to try to avoid tracking areas like this, or we're going to have problems with our solve in Mocha Blend. So let's go ahead and continue looking through the shot and see what looks like a good trackable area. Once we have that area, we're going to find the frame where the plane that we're tracking is facing directly at the camera. We're going to draw our spline on that frame. Now if you have a shot where the plane you're tracking isn't facing directly at the camera at any point, Mocha Blend has another way to try to find a solution to that. For this shot, we have a good candidate here on frame one. So let's go ahead and figure out where we can track. We're going to stay away from the curved area here. We're also going to stay away from the outside of the fingers here because those rotate away from us and Mocha can't track those because it can't see them. So when we draw our spline, let's go ahead and stay within the flattest area of the hand. Notice when we completed our spline, that Mocha displayed the blue surface area rectangle. Mocha Blend will find this frame and use it to compute its solve. Let's go ahead and turn on our grid so we can watch as we're tracking if the pink grid is changing perspective along with the hand. Do not forget the most important part, which is to turn on shear and perspective. We are going to be using Mocha Blend's 3D solver and it needs everything selected for it to come up with a solution. So let's go ahead and hit the track button and see what happens. My first impression is this looks like a good track. Let's go ahead and move through the timeline here and see if the pink grid is roughly matching the movement of the hand. Okay, so far so good. Now the pink grid and the blue surface area are what we care about. Let's turn off the grid here so we can see the surface area better. We'll zoom in a little bit. And if you look carefully, you'll see we have our spline. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking if the spline is moving around, that there's something wrong with Mocha's track. That's not true. This can actually float all over the place. What we care about is if the corners of the blue surface area are sticking to the same spot on the hand throughout the shot. So let's go ahead and click on Stabilize here, and we'll move through the shot here and see if those areas appear to be staying on the same spot. We want to look at a corner and see if it stays right about at the same spot on the hand. Now I see it slipping around a little bit here, 
That's because we're not dealing with a perfect plane here. Moco's done an excellent job of tracking this, but it's never going to be perfect unless the area is really flat. Now this looks good enough for Mocha Blend to work with, so let's go ahead and move over to Mocha Blend and see what we get. We're going to click on Export Tracking Data. We're going to select the Mocha Blend Tracking Data Export and go ahead and click on Copy to Clipboard. Here in Cinema 4D, we're going to paste in our data and then we're going to do the same thing we always do, which is import the format from the data into Cinema 4D if we need to. We're going to create a rig. We're going to set our timeline from our data here to Cinema 4D's timeline down here. Then we're going to go ahead and drop in our background footage. We'll take the first image of the sequence, drop it in the camera view here, and you'll see it pops up on our movie screen background, and also Mokoblin creates a material for you here. Now we're going to move over to Mokoblin's panel here, and on the Solve tab, on the Mokoblin Solve sub-tab, we're going to make sure we're in 3D mode here, Then we're going to look down here next to Auto. Frame 1, that's the frame where we set the geometry inside Mocha. Here's a quick tip for setting your geometry here in Mocha. Now Mocha Blend needs the geometry of this blue surface area to compute its 3D solve. And what we did before is on the first frame, where the plane was facing the camera, we drew our spline on that frame. That set the blue surface area as a perfect rectangle on this frame. Now what if you don't like the frame that you originally set, or you want to try setting it on a different frame? All you do is go to the frame that you want, click on this little button here, which says Align Selected Surface. That will push the borders of the blue surface to the limits of the footage. Then you can go ahead and pull down the sides, position them where you want, and remember the center of this blue surface is going to be the center of your tracking data export. Now on this frame, which is 169, Mocha Blend will now identify the geometry, and you'll see that frame number pop up in Mocha Blend next to the geometry area. Now that we've set our geometry, let's click on Solve. All right, anything between 80 and 100 is normally a pretty good solve for the 3D solver. Click on this little button here, and you'll see we get a graph, which you can see a little more clearly if we add an overlay to our footage. Now, anytime we have something roughly in a straight line like this, that's probably a good solve. We're only looking at one or two pixels of error here. And we can look through our shot here and see our blue surface area moving along with our hand. That's the actual Mocha data export. Now this red area here is really nothing to worry about. It's arbitrary and it's just set by the slider here. So you can highlight portions of your solve and see where the frames aren't as good as other frames. We can also scale our graph here up and down. This looks like a good solve to me, so let's go ahead and create something with it. Now at this point, we want an object solve, but it's always a good idea to create a camera solve first anyway, just to check the solve quality. We'll go ahead and click on camera solve, and you'll see what we get is our rig transformed into a camera solve. This area here is the path of the camera, and if we open up the little tree view here, and go down and take a look at the camera, make it visible, you'll be able to see what's really going on here. Here's our camera, and it's moving over that little surface area here. Now, how do we know if this is a good solve? Well, it turns out all we need to do is look at the path. You'll see everything looks pretty smooth here. You can see there's no giant gaps in the lines between the different parts. Now if we go back to Mocha and export a bad solve, we can take a look and see what the comparison is. Now let's export another track that isn't so good. Before we exported this track here, but earlier I created an intentionally bad track here, and you'll see if we zoom in a little bit that I have covered over these areas of the hand with my spline that are not entirely flat. You can see especially when we turn sideways. I've already tracked it, and you can see clearly if we turn on the blue surface area, and with stabilization on, take a look at where this corner is 
in reference to the hand here. You'll see that as I move through the timeline, it is sliding around quite a lot. It's not staying on the same spot at all. Now let's go ahead and export this and see how it looks when we turn this into a camera solve. Now back in Cinema 4D, what we're going to do is pick a new data slot. We're going to paste our data in. And we're also going to create a new rig for it. So let's just go ahead and grab this rig. We do so by grabbing the solve world, which is this little area here. You can always select it here in the tree view here, Mokobun solve world. We'll just go ahead and move this little thing out of the way for now. Now let's go ahead and create a new rig. We'll drop our background onto it. And on the solve tab, let's solve what is a bad track here. Now we can look at our graph here again, and you'll see this doesn't look quite as good, does it? See there's an area here where it zooms way up over four pixels, and that doesn't look like our other solve, does it? We should have more or less a straight line along here. Now let's go ahead and click on camera solve again, and you'll see if we zoom out a little bit, you can see now we got some huge gaps between the keyframes. This is what a bad solve looks like. If you see this, you need to go back to Mocha and go ahead and track it until the blue surface area is better sticking to the areas of the plane, or the hand in this case, that you're trying to track. Now what do these gaps actually mean? Well, if we go ahead and take a look at the camera itself, go ahead and turn, make it visible again, you'll see the camera here, let's go ahead and just select the camera, you'll see the camera is going to be jumping around and skipping over those areas. See how it like jumps from one spot to another? That's typically a sign of a bad solve. If we go ahead and select our camera motion here again, we can see more clearly what's going on. It's bouncing between keyframes here. So go back to Mocha when you see this and fix your track. Now we wanted an object solve, so let's go ahead and just get rid of all this stuff here. We'll start over with a new rig. We'll go ahead and drop our footage onto our movie screen background. We'll also set our focal length so our new rig camera has the same focal length as the solved focal length. Next up, we want to simply create a corner pin plane. And you'll see a little bit more clearly if we push our movie screen back and also turn off transparency, you'll see this represents the blue surface area inside Mocha. This is a 3D plane that is moving around in 3D space. It is not a corner pin. Let's go ahead and create a transform null on it. And you'll see our transform null is going to be at the center of our blue surface area. So let's go ahead and uh, go to frame one and we'll drop a cube right on that grid. Here we go, let's scale it so it matches the size a little bit. Let's make it a child of that transform. We'll zero out its settings here and also move it so it's sitting pretty much on the plane. Let's see if we rotate around here and then look through our camera and one last thing we'll turn on constant shading lines so we can see the edges of the cube better. You'll see our cube is now, let's see, it's twitch, oh, see it's twitching around. It's going the wrong way. This is another sign of a bad solve in this case, from an object perspective. Now, why did this happen? Because we stayed on our bad track here. So let's go ahead and actually delete this whole thing here because we don't want that. We'll create a new rig, do the same thing over again, drop our footage on here, set our focal length of our rig to match our solved focal length. And this time, let's get out of bad track and move over to our good track, layer 10. Uh, it has a different focal length, obviously, because the bad track came up with a crazy focal length. So let's go ahead and match it to the solve. And once again, we'll create a corner pin plane. We'll push our background back. Let's go ahead and make it so it is not transparent. Create a transform null. Go back to frame one, just because it's easier to set our cube on it this way. Let's create another cube. Let's make it a child of our 3D transform. Scale it down a little bit. 
go ahead and zero out its origin settings. And then let's just move it so it's sitting right on our plane. Now, if we look through the camera this time, we should see a good object solve. And you see it's not twitching around anymore and it's nicely following the movement of the hand. Now, this wasn't a perfect track in Mocha, but you see Mocha Blend did a good job here. You could probably refine the track a little better than I did. I just took the first track that looked pretty good when I did the tutorial here. Looks like a good object solve. Now, one little note here on the solve tab, when I showed you this graph, we showed that we had a little over two or close to three pixels of error here. Now, this type of error here is unique to Mocha Blend. It isn't really deflecting two or three pixels because Mocha Blend plays a little trick and actually corrects little minor imperfections like that. So when you're looking through the camera, things do line up properly. So when you're looking at two or three pixels of error, that's nothing for Mocha Blend. Don't compare it to other solvers. The scale is not the same.